everyone welcome to spectrum classes this video is in continuation with the water chemistry videos and here in this video we are going to discuss about the geolite permuted water softening method and this method is an external water softening method which is done outside the boiler and here in this video we are going to discuss what is called geolite and permuted are they same or different their chemical structure and how to draw the chemical structure for exam point of view filtration assembly and its working principle reactions involved advantages and disadvantages so these are the points which we are going to discuss in this video so let's start with the geolite permuted water softening method so before discuss about this water softening method first we will discuss about the geolite and the permuted so what is called geolite and permuted so one must understand the terms and their meanings so this geolite is composed of two different greek words so first is geo which means boil the light which comes from the lithos it means stone okay and on combining these two words we are having boiling stones so geolites are such type of stones that's on heating gives the vapors like a boiling water gives okay so that is why we call it used to call it um, boiling stones and they termed as geolites now the question comes what is called permuted is geolite and permuted both are same or different so first this these are the man made or synthetic geolites and permuted especially is the trade name for the ortho silicate of sodium aluminum compound and its chemical formula is na2al2si2o8 xh2o and how one can remember this like in the third period sodium then magnesium aluminium silica these four elements are in the same period okay so here we can simply cut down this magnesium and apart from that these three elements we have used over here so sodium 2 aluminium 2 silicon 2 and then oxygen 8 we are having x h2 due to this water these are called hydrated and this is encaptured in their cavities or the pores of this sodium alumina silicate so this is how one can remember this so here it is geolite and its chemical formula geolites are known as molecular sieves as they have porous and open 3d crystal structures and that is why we call it molecular sieves as we discussed earlier geolites are made up of sodium aluminum silicon and oxygen instead of sodium one can also use potassium and magnesium geolites are also there with trapped h2o molecules in the gaps between them so there is a porous structure of alumina silicates or geolites and in that porous structure water molecules are trapped in that and if these water molecules are arranged then they behave as a channels give the name of a natural geolite its name is natrolite and its structure is like this sodium then aluminum and silica so these are the three elements in the third period so na oxygen is having minus two valency okay so sodium is plus one so here in this way you just simply write two over here one over here so we usually do not write this one alumina has three plus valency oxygen is having two minus so two will be here and this three will be at this side so this i here silica is 4 plus and o is 2 minus so here this is sio2 so here if you write 2 and here you write 4 so 2 to the 4 so 1 and 2 then in that case so here dots are there and now h2o so in this way one can easily remember this and this is four times this is net and light so by the combination of these two you can easily understand natrolite uh, natural geolite formula now hydrated aluminosilicate minerals are represented by this for chemical formula so sodium na2al2si2o8 this is the chemical formula and which kind of chemical structure it has so it has silica and alumina tetrahedral units which are interlinked so that i have shown or drawn over here 
So first you must understand how this structure is drawn. As I told you earlier that this is having four plus valency, okay? And every oxygen is having two minus. So two minus, two minus, two minus. This is just for your understanding. No need to remember all these things. How we have done this. So four plus and here is eight minus. So overall it has four minus. Similarly here three plus and 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus so 8 minus so 8 minus 3 plus so what we will get overall charge on this unit will be minus 5. So we are having these two tetrahedral units which are arranged in a definite structure. So let's start how these units are arranged. So first I have drawn this silica oxygen oxygen so four oxygens are there as I shown you over here and here is written tetrahedral right. Here is four oxygen elements, right? And now, if we continue this in this manner, so we are having this. But alumina unit is also there. So, we sometimes replace silica by using this element. So, here I have made this arrangement. I have just simply replaced a silica by alumina. So here you can understand here we are having 4 plus and here we are having 3 plus. So how this can be replaced? So just to balance this minus charge over here, sodium plus is introduced, right? So in this way, this is having Na2Al2SI2O8 structure. How this un these elements are arranged in a unit? So, in this manner, these are arranged. To date, to more than 200 geolite structures are known to us. Draw the three-dimensional geolite structure for your exam point of view. How one can draw that in a simple manner? So, here first make a eight-membered ring. Here is the eight-membered ring. And on each alternate side, you simply draw a square. This is one kind of structure, though there are several different type of structures are mentioned in the literature. But this is actually simple one and you can draw this in your exam. So I have chosen this only. Okay. So this again make eight member ring out of these. Okay. Now the second thing which you can do here simply draw this kind of squares like this and add or attach these in this manner and again uh, if you simply want to repeat this unit so simply just do this kind of exercise in this manner okay just to have a three-dimensional look of this and now here are the sodium atoms which are attached. So this sodium and these are the bigger channels. And this sodium is replaced when we fill, use it as a filter. And since the size of the sodium is smaller than the calcium and magnesium ions, these calcium and magnesium ions fit into this cavity and this sodium leaches out to the water, purified water. And in this way, this works. So here you can draw this a three-dimensional structure. Okay. The next thing, uh, the geolite softening assembly. How we can draw this geolite water assembly? So here is the raw water. Raw water. And this is attached with the brine water is here. Brine water is nothing but this saturated solution of NaCl. Here are the geolite bed and this is the gravels bed and this is the soft water. This is the base unit which supports this assembly. And from here one can draw the soft water, soft water outlet. So how is this functions? Functioning of this geolite bed with this small animation. So here Suppose water is having calcium and magnesium ions. Okay, so here I have represented this yellow balls with calcium and magnesium. Okay, and these brown are represents sodium plus. So th when this 
water containing this calcium and magnesium is filtered through this this then this due to their bigger size so this is fitting into that and sodium atoms which are present over there they will leach out into the soft water so soft water contains sodium and the calcium and magnesium ions are just exhaust this bed once this bed is completely saturated it needs to be regenerated how we are doing this regeneration so this is the saturated solution of nacl and when we are regenerating this zeolite bed we will stop the flow of raw water then we will simply inject this sodium chloride solution or brine water to the system by using the pressure and this nacl in that way sodium is again attached with this zeolite and calcium is removed from there that solution will be removed from this outlet so in this way this zeolite softening assembly functions and now the reactions involved here is zd represents the zeolite which what is that that is na2 al2 si2 o8 xh2o instead of writing this we simply write this is the ge part so here sodium zeolite this is the temporary hardness of calcium and magnesium and this sodium zeolite on reaction sodium zeolite calcium zeolite and sodium bicarbonate this is mg and this is sodium bicarbonate again and now if we are having permanent hardness of calcium so this is calcium chloride calcium sulfate on reaction with sodium zeolite it will gives us calcium zeolite sodium chloride or sodium sulfate right and similarly the permanent hardness of magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate on reaction with sodium zeolite it gives magnesium zeolite and here to uh, sodium chloride or sodium sulfate so in this way this will reacts with the calcium and magnesium permanent hardness now the regeneration regeneration how one can do so as i told you earlier the saturated solution of nacl will use to regenerate this calcium and magnesium exhausted zeolite so in this way again we get the sodium zeolite calcium and magnesium chlorides are removed from the filtration assembly after regeneration of the zeolite bed and as i told you earlier or i have shown this small animation how this reacts and uh, here are the advantages and disadvantages of the zeolite and permeated water softening method so the advantages are as it can produce the water of 10 ppm residual hardness so this is the main advantage which we require water treated from zeolite method if used in boiler does not form sludge and the third point is it is simple economic and less time consuming water softening process the disadvantages of zeolite process this method replace calcium and magnesium by sodium plus ions but all the anionic species like calcium sulfate carbonate etc are left untreated when this water is used in boiler it causes boiler corrosion and caustic embrittlement due to the formation of sodium chloride chemicals etc if there is highly turbid water that needs to be treated before adding to the process because it exhausted the zeolite bed the third point is that highly acidic water can attack the zeolite as well as hot water can not be treated by this zeolite and tends to dissolve in it so in this video we have covered the zeolite and permeated water softening method how to draw their structures and how they work the reactions involved their advantages and disadvantages i hope you understand all these concept and in the next video we are going to discuss the numerical problems based on the zeolite and permeated water softening method in that video you will better understand this method so i hope you understand all these concept which have been discussed over here thank you all have a good day